Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about ExpressRoute Metro, a higher availability solution for our ExpressRoute circuits. Now, if we take a step back, if we think of Microsoft, will Microsoft run one of the biggest networks in the world? So I have my Microsoft WAN, and all of the Azure regions connect to this network. So if I just pick any region, inside that region, we have the regional network gateways that provide that redundant and resilient connectivity to that backbone. And all of the other regions, hey, they're doing the same thing. So they all have connectivity to the backbone, as do other Microsoft services. If you think about Bing and the Xbox services and Office, they're all utilizing that Microsoft Backbone WAN. And then Microsoft extend their network to other edge locations. Now these edge locations could be carrier neutral facilities where other carriers, the internet, they all come in and they connect to each other and that powers the internet. So that Microsoft Backbone Network extends into many of these external carrier neutral facilities. Edge sites, sometimes you hear them called points of presence, pop locations. But these are all throughout the world. And these are edge locations. So that enables connectivity to internet and to offer those services, etc. But additionally, at many of these edge locations, Microsoft offers the ability for a customer to establish their own private connectivity to Microsoft services. This is what you'll hear as, as ExpressRoute. So if we think of ExpressRoute, this is where you would go and pick, uh, you might hear it called a meet me, a peering point, But it's the location where I want to connect my network to the Microsoft network. And what that would look like is as the customer, may I've got my network and I connect into that particular peering location. Now the exact connectivity for the customer may, may vary. It could be a point-to-point -point Ethernet connection. It could be using the MPLS. You might be co-located at one of these facilities. It doesn't change the nature of what's actually happening, which is you as the customer purchase a circuit and that circuit is providing this connectivity. Now you may use ExpressRoute Direct. With ExpressRoute Direct, you buy a pair of ports at that particular edge location, and then you create circuits on top of that, really as many as you want. But what's happening here is that your provider or you, you have your own routers. And on the Microsoft side, they have their routers. So they call the Microsoft Enterprise Edge. And there'll be two of these. And then you get that connectivity. And that is providing you a circuit. And so these are active active. So the key point here is they're, they're both there. And so what this gives me resilience from is fairly small scale. For example, you could think about if there was an issue with uh, a particular router had an issue, you could think about how there's planned maintenance going on. Well, then that's gonna carry on functioning because you have this active active set of connectivity. So it gives me that level of resilience, which is great. However, if you look at what this is, they're in the same physical building. I have two active active connections that make up my circuit, but it's the same building. If I was thinking about regular Azure, this would be like using availability sets. So yes, I have resiliency. Yes, they're in different hosts, maybe different racks, but they're still within that same building. So if there's a facility level failure, then, hey, my ExpressRoute circuit 
would be down. It would be unavailable. Which is why normally when you hear about express rail, they talk about, hey, make sure you also have another circuit with a huge distance away and leverage that. And then I can do various types of routing. I can do waiting. I can do path prepending to have one preferred and then one as the backup. But there's a certain amount of cost associated with that. There's a certain amount of complexity with that waiting, with the path prepending, with having all that in place that makes it maybe uh, not attractive or tolerable for a large number of customers. So what can we do to solve that? And as you would guess, this is where Express Route Metro comes in. So if this is the traditional model today where yes, I purchase a circuit and that circuit has those two connections, active, active, but to the same facility, what Express Route Metro is gonna do is they still have two connections but then they're gonna be split over two edge sites, so two different physical locations, but within the same metroplex, but within the same city. So now what it would look like, if I'm doing Express Route Metro, if I think I have these two different peering points, well, they exist in the same city, metroplex. And so now what it would look like, and again, it would vary depending on your provider how you're actually doing this, but I still have my two connections, but now I get one to each of the locations. I still have kind of the router here, which again, your provider may be taking care of. On the Microsoft side, they still have their Microsoft Enterprise Edge, their routers, but I'm now connecting this way. So in an Azure term, this would be more like availability zones. I have resiliency now from a physical facility level problem. So even if that whole building had an issue, well, my second connection, because they're still active active, nothing is changing about that, the other one would still be up and running. So it gives me an additional level of resiliency. Now, if this was Express Route Direct, then obviously you as a customer would need a router at each of those locations. If you're using a provider, they will probably take care of that. If I'm using the Equinix fabric, for example, it would expose both sites within the Metro just as part of that regular uh, circuit you go and create. Now this is in preview at time of recording, so all that means is it's only available in a few cities today, but it's gonna to expand to others over time. The only thing different is when you pick your peering location, it's gonna say Metro at the end of the name. This will not cost more. The goal here, I think eventually, was this would ex extend to everywhere, and this would be what I would want to use. It's the same way today, I try and use availability zones everywhere I can, you would use Express Route Metro everywhere you could. Now, Microsoft have no additional cost to use Express Route Metro, but obviously your telco that's providing that connectivity to the edge location, they may. So that would be a discussion with the telco to see what that arrangement would be to use the Express Route Metro, because hey, they, especially if I'm doing a point to point ethernet, well now they may be having to drop uh, an entirely different uh, physical line. MPLS may not be an issue. Again, talk to your provider, but that's where additional cost may come into it. And just to see it super quickly, but there really isn't very much to look at, if we were to go and look at create an express route circuit, and again, it's only certain providers today and only certain locations. So what we can see here is I'm using Megapult. And then if I select peering locations, so these all look very normal. Okay, regular, regular, regular. Then at the bottom, we see this one. So Amsterdam is one of those early sites, just has Metro at the bottom. And that is the only thing different. Nothing else changes about anything I do. It's not a different cost on the Azure side. It doesn't change my configuration. I'm literally just picking Express Route Metro 
So now what that would mean is my active active, the two connections I get, instead of going to the same physical edge location, will now be split over two edge locations within the same city. That's it. That, that's the only difference it makes. It's, it's that simple. And it's saying we're going to want to leverage if it's available in the city we use. So what does this mean in terms of express route? Resiliency now. So if I think about my resiliency options, if I do the traditional active active two connections to the same location, well, we'll call this standard resiliency. If I go this option where I'm using the Metro, we'll call this high resiliency. Now, obviously, you could still take the approach of either I'm using a non-metro or I'm using metro, and then I also have connectivity to another peering location, and this is hundreds of miles away from whichever one I currently have, well, that would be the highest. So I'm adding a second And obviously, these could be metro or non-metro. Uh, let's just write that name inside it. So this is Express Route Metro. So having peering locations that are hundreds of miles away, that's obviously the, the biggest level of resiliency. The same way in Azure, I typically use multiple regions in case there's a huge regional level type of outage. But we have those three tiers. Hey, standard, one peering location, one edge facility, standard. If I'm using Express Route Metro within a city, but it's now two edge locations, two sites, that's high resiliency. The highest would still be, hey, I also have a second circuit in another city. Huge distance from my primary. That would give me the absolute best level of resiliency. And that was it. I mean, I hope that makes sense. The only thing different here is, hey, my connections, now get split over two edge locations within a certain Metroplex. Nothing else I need to do. I just select that word Metro. But again, do be cognizant of the fact that your telco provider, they may have additional costs for you, which is why if you're doing this highest option, you may not use the Metro because it's obviously additional cost. You may just go for two standard resiliency express route circuits um, to get that resiliency. As always, I hope this was useful. Until uh, next video, take care.